Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been forever, but I'm super excited today to show you how to make this easy diamond tumbler. There's no template required and it comes out so stinking cute. So let's get started. All I'm gonna do first is pick out a 12 by 12 sheet of patterned vinyl. The one I'm using is Create by Firefly and I'll have a link in the description box below along with a discount code. But all I'm gonna do is take that sheet, I've trimmed up any raw edges so that it's just a perfect 12 by 12 and I'm just gonna take my safety ruler and go corner to corner. Then I'm gonna take that half and I'm gonna fold tip to tip and then use my desk as a flat surface for that edge I made. And that's gonna find the midpoint for me and I'm just gonna split it in half. So after this step, I'll have perfect quarters of vinyl, none wasted, I'll have three perfect pieces left to use on other projects and my perfect quarter for this one. So then I'm just kind of looking here to see which one I like best and I'm going to pick one and we're just going to do a vinyl wrap just like we normally would for a V-split. So today I'm going to work with a 20 ounce thickum. I think I got this one from Parish Tumblers. So as always, I just kind of do a test run and make sure it fits the project well and then I'm going to cut off a little anchor. All I'm going to do is use my desk for the flat edge, stick my anchor down. I'm going to do a test run and pull it around and I'm satisfied with the way it looks and then I can just go ahead and squeegee it right on. Could not be any simpler. So after I've got my vinyl on there, I just kind of take a look around, make sure my edge is good, make sure there's no bubbles to address. I generally don't have a lot of those issues when I use my little felt squeegee. Then I'm just going to tape off the raw edges of the vinyl before I start measuring out my diamond. You definitely want to tape off first because you don't want to accidentally draw on your vinyl wherever you're going to place your diamond stencil. So we want to tape that off first. Now don't forget, after you've taped off the edges of your vinyl, you want to come back and you want to trim off that V so we have a nice, straight, perfect edge there as well. I always overlap a little bit so I can trim it by hand because I really like super crisp lines. Okay, so once you have your V trimmed off, we're ready to move on to the next step. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little handy tool from the Amy's Make Everything, and I'm just going to draw a straight line from the very tip of that vinyl where it meets in the peak straight down to the bottom of the tumbler. I just want to find the center point of that vinyl. And I'm doing this in pencil, which I can see just fine in person, but I realize it's a little bit hard to see on video. Then I'm going to measure how much vinyl is at the top of my tumbler and I'm going to make a mark at the bottom of my tumbler at the matching height because I want it to be symmetrical. I want there to be as much vinyl at the top as there is glitter on the bottom so that my diamond is perfectly symmetrical. So you can see the mark I've made there. I got smart and did it in Sharpie for you so you could see it too. Then I'm going to measure the distance between the tip and the mark I made and that's going to be how long my diamond is and I want to find the exact center point of it. So I'm going to measure that divided by two and then make a mark there and that's my halfway point. So my diamond will end at that bottom mark and the center is going to be the middle mark. So then I'm just going to take this ruler tool that I can draw a line with and I'm going to mark lines out on both of those spots that I marked. Now the center point was just to help me find my destination that the tape is going to go in so I'm not really concerned about drawing that line out for you. So then I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to start at my center point there and I'm going to bring that tape down to meet right at the center line that I drew. There's a little crosshair there. I'll mark it here so you can see it better. But I want to come down to that crosshair. Then I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to come from the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. And this is going to make me a perfect diamond that is perfectly sized to be matching at the top and bottom and I know exactly where the center point is. How easy is that? So at this point, you can wash off the marker if you choose to. If you're using a light glitter, I would. Since I'm using a dark one, it really didn't matter, but I did it for you. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of my heavy body acrylic paint. This is a dark purple from my Arteza set. And I'm just gonna paint that on a nice coat. And then the first glitter I'm gonna go in with is Lavender Splendor from Bougie Glitter Boutique. It's almost like a 
middle of the road purple. It's not really lilac, but it's not really dark either. And I'm going to tap that off really well. And then I'm only going to pull the bottom two pieces of tape. I still want to protect the vinyl at the top for my painting on the back side. So I'm not going to pull all of that off yet. I'm just going to pull the first ones. And again, if you want to wash your marker off here, you can, but I'm not going to because I'm going to keep working with a dark color. So I'm just going to clean up my mess really quickly. I don't want to contaminate my other glitter, so I'm just going to give it a quick little vacuum. And we're ready to go with the second part. Since both of these glitters that I'm using are metallic and they're not going to have any transparency to them, it really doesn't matter what base color I use as long as it's somewhat close. So I'm actually going straight in with the dark color again for the second glitter. And this one is going to be Purple People Eater from Bougie Glitter Boutique. I have links and discount codes for both of those down in the description box as well. It's such a pretty color and it matches the vinyl so well. So you just want to make sure that you're getting all the way up to that line. But remember that other glitter is still wet under there, so we don't want to push it too hard. We just want to get up to the line nicely and smooth out all your paint so there's no weird lumps, bumps, and ripples, things like that. And if you're a slow painter, it doesn't hurt to go around one last time and make sure that all of the areas of paint are moist and nothing has dried out on you. And then you can see I'm sort of careful when I sprinkle my glitter to kind of hit right along that line. If you have good coverage on your first layer of glitter on the other color, you're not going to have any fallout sticking to it. But just to be safe, just kind of be like cognizant of that while you're doing it. Once I have that glittered, I'm just going to pull the tape off and tap it off over the trash can so as not to contaminate my other glitter with the first one. And then I'm going to set that aside to dry for about 30 minutes and then it's time to seal it with some polycrylic. So I like to come in with just a paintbrush and some liquid poly. Doesn't matter what formula you use. You can use matte, you can use semi-gloss, you can use clear gloss. Really doesn't matter because under epoxy, everything shines right back up either way. So what I like to do is kind of trace along my edges. Kind of like when I was a little kid and I colored in a coloring book, I would always draw real hard with my crayon on the edges and then kind of fill in the centers. So I'm doing the same thing with my poly because I don't want to drag one glitter into the other. That would defeat the whole purpose of a ceiling. So I'm just going to go around and do all my edges, make sure I keep it off the vinyl, make sure I keep it off the dark glitter, and then fill in the center. So you want to make sure that you get a decent enough coverage on it that it's going to do the job for you, but you also don't want it so gloopy on there that it's going to run. Because you're going to set this cup aside to dry and you don't want to come back and find little rivers of glitter that have ran down in your poly. So then I just rinse my paintbrush out real quick to make sure I get all that light glitter out. And then I'm going to go right back in with the same brush and do the dark glitter. Same concept. I'm going to go right around all my edges. Make sure they're sealed up good. You want to bring the poly all the way to the edge of the vinyl but without pushing glitter over where it doesn't belong. Because you want everything sealed down nice and tight when you go to epoxy. Usually this only takes one coat of polycrylic for me. Um, I'm going to show you here in a second. I do what I call the touch test before I like proceed on with my epoxy coat. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But usually one coat is plenty. And you can see where it looks kind of wet and whiter. So you'll know if you miss any spots, you won't miss anything. So then after I've let that dry for about 30 minutes, I'm just going to take a clean hand and I'm going to rub it all over the tumbler. And as you can see, there's no glitter fallout on my hand. So that passed my touch test. If I had glitter on my hand, I would dust it off really good with a chip brush and I would put another coat of poly on to seal it. I personally don't like to use clear spray as a sealant if I can avoid it because I don't think it does a very good job without many, many coats. And also when you're sealing loose glitter like that, the initial puff of air from the can can actually blow loose glitter onto the vinyl and onto the other color of glitter. And I don't want that. It kind of defeats the purpose. So I like to just use poly in a paintbrush. So once it passes my touch test, I just take my chip brush and I give it one good dust off and then I do kind of check the vinyl for any imperfections that need to be removed before I go in with my coat of epoxy. So right here I've thrown it on the turner, it's all leveled. I'm going to go in with a 20 mil coat of Mr. Nola Speed Dry. It is my go-to epoxy and I know right now you're thinking, oh my gosh, that looks so white and bubbly and it is and it's okay because I promise you it's going to come out gorgeous. 
So I'm just going to rub that 20 mil coat on. With Mr. Nola's thinner coats are better. It is a really thick epoxy, so you get excellent coverage. But sometimes you need to go easier on the coat than you think you do. So 15, 20 mils is all you need to seal in this glitter. And you can see it's all white and foamy, but I'm going to torch it here in just a second, and it's going to be beautiful. So after I hit it with my torch and show it a little love, I'm going to have all those bubbles gone. That epoxy is going to be moving nice and smoothly all over the tumbler, and I'm going to get an excellent coverage coat. I'm going to let that cure for about three hours, and then I'll be ready to start sanding and applying my decal and stripes. You do want to make sure you don't sand over the area where the decal is going to go because if you do that, the epoxy won't be able to shine back up under the clear edges, and you will definitely see your sanding marks. So I'm going in with this uh, metallic chrome opal. It's from Tech Wrap. I have it linked in the description box. And I like to kind of map out how wide I'm going to make my fancy extra pinstripes. So I'm going to lay the big ones first there at the bottom and then space out my skinnier accent stripes. And then I'm going to come through with the longer edges so that those shorter tails can be tucked under those. So after I get those on, I'll come back through from the top and add my skinnier stripes. Now I am going to cut them off so that they're free floating in the center of the diamond and not touching at the edges, but I do overlap the edges when I'm laying them because that is a visual guide for me to space them correctly. I want all my little points of my V's lined up and I want even spacing all around. So I use that as my guide and then I cut off the ends. I know I'm a little bit out of frame, I'm sorry. It's sometimes hard for me because I'm looking down at the tumbler to see it better and I, I wind up coming out of frame a little bit. So I'm going to cut off all those excess edges and then I'm going to come back through with my darker accent which is a dark purple striping that I'm going to put just on the thicker stripes. All right, so once I have all those uh, chrome stripes on, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my dark purple here. And again, I'm gonna leave those overlapped and hanging over the edges as well because I wanna trim all of those off at the end nicely. That's how I make sure I get really nice points that match up. Then after these purple stripes are finished, which they're only going to be a couple, um, I'm ready to go in with my decal. I'm using one that matches the vinyl. It is also from Create by Firefly, and I also have that linked below as well. It says, Love You to Death, and it has a heart on it with a little bandage, sort of brokenish. It's really super cute, and it matches this metallic marble so well. So I'm just going to throw my cup on my little stand from the decal ranch here and that helps stand it up so I can really center this. You want to be really aware of your spacing for your decal at both the top and the sides of the diamond so that everything looks balanced. So I'm just going to cut the edge of it off and kind of hold it up so I can see better. And then I just went ahead and took it off the backing completely. Sometimes I do use the hinge method, but this time I wasn't able to see what I wanted to on the edges. So I just went rogue with it and it worked out well. So I'm just going to stick that down well, and then there's no need to wait for anything to dry or anything to sit for a while. I'm just going to go straight in with a little bit of polycrylic to seal it. We all know how metallic vinyl, especially chrome, can misbehave under epoxy. So I don't want to take any chances. Uh, the tech wrap generally behaves pretty well, but I still don't trust it. So I'm just going to come in with another coat of that same polycrylic over all my striping. And you'll see at the top of the cup, I actually decided to throw one more stripe on it. It was kind of an afterthought. Sometimes I like to run one around the top that matches as well. And sometimes I don't. It really just depends on my mood. This one, I kind of wanted it there, so I threw that extra stripe on. So I'm going to seal that really well with poly as well. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry for 
15-20 minutes is all it'll take, and then she'll be ready for her final coats of epoxy. How stinking cute is this little tumbler, and so easy. I know it looks complicated to try to get that diamond perfectly spaced out, but two little measurements and a straight line is all it takes, I promise you guys. It's so simple, and it's so cute. So I'm just going to get my bottom edge of my cup here and then give it a quick hit from the torch and she'll be ready to go in about 30 minutes or so. I can actually throw a second coat on right over that first coat of uh, speed dry that's still drying and they will bond together. If you're not able to add a coat on quickly like that, you do want to go ahead and let it sit and cure so that you can sand in between layers. So after I got that last coat of epoxy on, I hit it with a little torch love to pop all those bubbles, smooth everything out, give myself an excellent final coat, and she was good to go. So I stopped the turner at about 45 minutes to an hour, set it to the side and let it fully dry for several hours before I scooped it up and went to take pictures of it. I just love this tumbler so much and I really enjoyed making it for you guys today. I hope that you enjoy the video as well. And if you try to make one for yourself, I would love to see what you come up with. So please tag me on social media when you share it. And if you'd like to see more lives and tutorials, hop on over to my Facebook group at A Bit of Bling Creative Community. We have a huge community of really awesome crafters that are super willing to help and just have a lot of fun. So thanks for joining me guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.